In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the vinyl spooler. The vinyl spooler is the final stage before sending your artwork that you've converted into a cut file to then send to your vinyl cut or to your plotter. Now normally to bring up the vinyl spooler, I'll just go to page 2 here, you'd ordinarily you'd select some, uh, some artwork like this and you'd send it up to your um, cut file manager and then you'd send the cut files to the vinyl spooler. That's how you'd normally do it. But what I did want to show you is that you can actually access the vinyl spooler from say the file menu. You come down to this fly out here, go to vinyl spooler, I'll use the shortcut here, that brings it up. Or alternatively you can come up to this fly out here and click on vinyl spooler here. Both these ways will bring up the vinyl spooler independently of the cut file manager. But to get a job into the vinyl spooler, what you need to do is select some artwork like this and click on this button up here, send a cut file, and the cut file manager will come up. Now the cut file manager automatically colour separates our artwork as you can see here and it prepares the artwork to be then sent to the vinyl spooler using these buttons down here. Now the cut file manager has its own lessons and its own help files and it's quite a big program or a big module and you know, I encourage you to go and see those lessons and, and read through the help files to understand how to use this module. But once we're actually happy with our cut file that we've designed here or set out and we want to send it to the vinyl spooler which in this case is just by default it's perfect ready to go. If I just want to cut out this black colour here, I could just click cut tile and that'd send that to the vinyl spooler on its own. If I want to send all these colours to the vinyl spooler, I'd click cut all like this. And that loads, as you can see, all these colours into the vinyl spooler ready to go. And when I click on these, as you can see, I see a preview down here. I see my plotter, I see my vinyl and where it's going to cut so I know exactly what I'm going to do with these particular cut files. They're all colour separated. Down here I've got the job name, so this is the job back in the, uh, the main program. This is my job number, I'm up to uh, job number 215. I'm cutting one of these cut files and I've got my size here. Now if you want to change the, uh, the units you're working with, you can come up to settings here and change it to say inches for example. So that's how that works and how we can actually see our cut files, how they're sorted like this. Yeah, basically the vinyl spooler is a cut file management utility. It stores your cut files and allows you to sort and filter them. You can also use the optimizer and nest tools to actually arrange these in the preview over here, but I'll come back to that in a moment. What I do want to explain is some a very uh, fundamental concept of the vinyl spooler. You'll see when I've loaded up this job here that these folders here are all remaining empty. I can only see my current job here, the one I'm actually working on. Now the vinyl spooler does this on purpose. What it's designed to do is to send cut files to the vinyl spooler from the cut file manager and only show you the current job you're working on. You don't get cluttered with all the other jobs you've been working on in the past. But if you do want to see all those other jobs, no problems. You just come up and click on this button here, All Jobs. And we can see them all here. And they're currently sorted by colour, as you can see. And I can change this, this sorting here by just clicking on these top bars up here. So I can change the colour. I can filter it by, uh, or sort it by job name. I can sort it by job number, the quantity, or the size. And this is either highest to lowest, or alphabetically sorted, or by colour as you can see here. So I have a lot of control on how I actually manage my cut files. But as you can see, in, in a fairly short period of time you end up with hundreds if not thousands of cut files. So, so to be able to click on this button newest like this, and just filter out all those other cut files, is a great way of just focusing on the job at hand, without being all bombarded with these other cut files here. But if I, as I say, if you do want to see them, you just simply click on that. Now I'll also show you how to manage your cut files by dragging and dropping them, which this is how this all works here. It can either work with drag or drop, or the send to button here. So for example, if I've got this file here, um, in custom here, that uh, I want to put in my repeats, I can just drag this, left click and click it down, and drag it down here and drop it in repeats or I can grab say this job here and bring it back up to custom. So by using drag and drop I can move files in between folders simply by using drag and drop. If I want to put this uh, back into say the repeats I can go send to and come down and click on repeats and it sends it back to repeats. I can click on send to and I can send it back to custom. So I can move my cut files around between these folders very easily using my send to button or using the mouse. The folders themselves, they're fairly self-explanatory. You've got the done folder here, these are the jobs I've actually cut out. My repeats, these are jobs that I'm likely to keep cutting out. What I've got in my deleted folder here, these are jobs that I've actually deleted out. 
and I've got also got this custom folder here. This is uh, provided to you as a place, a storage folder for any custom work that you've got or any particular reason you want to put a uh, cut file in a particular folder, you've got that there for you. So that's how that works there. As you can see, you can just scroll through and you can see all your, um, all your cut files over here in the preview. You'll also see in the preview we've got our uh, make and model of plotter and what width it's cutting to. Now we can change these settings by coming to the settings tab here and as you can see under the settings tab you've got your plotter, its port that it's connected with, the media width, the media length, some of these cutting options here, so on and so forth. Now some of these are actually dependent on what vinyl cutter you've got selected. So some of these tools will change depending on what make and model of plotter and what port connection you're using. So these are a little bit dynamic. So what you see here may be different in your version because you've got a completely different plotter selected. But the concepts are pretty simple here. Uh, what we've got here is the media width. Now the media width relates to the actual cuttable width. This isn't relating to the actual media in the plotter. So if I go to the preview here, we know it's a 24 inch roll and plotter here. But with, if you uh, remove the, um, the pinch rollers here that take up about half an inch each, you only have a cuttable width of 23 inches. So I can only cut 23 inches wide, so that's why we set it to 23 inches. Now the program does that itself when you set up a plotter, but you can override this. For example, you might only have 12 inch material in the machine, which means you'd set this to 11 inch because you can only cut 11 inch on a 12 inch piece of vinyl, so on and so forth. We've got this settings here, and as you can see if I go to all settings here, there's a lot of settings for each individual plotter that you can actually go through and you know manipulate and change. This has its own lesson and help files and I recommend you have a look at those. I'm not going to go into them now. And just be aware that a lot of these controls and uh, options here are fairly advanced concepts and if you don't know what you're doing, please don't go and change them because you'll just end up with a mess. So just leave those be unless you get told by one of our technicians to change them. Okay, so that's the settings there. If I want to change my plotter at the moment, I've got it set to a GX24. If I set it to say a G GX640, you can see a GX640 cuts a lot wider than a 24. It's a 64 inch plotter, it's got a maximum uh, cutting width of 65 inches. So if I go to some of these samples here, you can see that I've got this much wider cutting width here than what I had a moment ago when I had the GX24. Um, when I come back in here, you can see that it's a much narrower plotter, only 23 inches wide. Another important concept is media length. Now media length works in with Optimize and Nest. And the idea of media length is to restrict the cutting length of your actual plotter. So in other words, if you've got a plotter that runs skew if after say 10 feet, you'd set your media length to 120 inches, for example. I mean, it depends exactly on the machine itself, but you know, often machines will run off, uh, run off the rollers after a certain distance, so you can actually restrict how long you uh, actually allow your cut files to be. But I'll come back to that and explain that in greater detail in a moment. The other thing here, we've got like these cutting options. Now these are diagnostic tools, and these are a great way of just checking things are working properly with your plotter. You can also set things like your, uh, your end method and an extra feed here. But as I say, this has its own lesson and help files and you can go and see those. But to change a plotter is simply just a matter of coming in here and changing a plotter. And what you can do is if I want to cut out, say, all this yellow to a GX24, I can send all these cut files by clicking cut now and that'll send it off to the GX24. And at the same time, I could then come in here and go to the GX640 and I could cut all these greens out. And so long as they're on a different port, uh, I can simultane simultaneously uh, plot or cut to multiple plotters at the same time. So that's an advantage you've got with using the system here. So that's how that works. So what I might do now is just explain to you a little bit more about this optimizer and nest uh, options and tools here. So the way this works, we'll, um, we'll just sort it out by job name here. And what I'll show you here with Optimize, we'll come down to this, this is a good example of it actually. You'll notice down here we've got copies, so this is a standard step and repeat. Now this is related, so I'll show you what I mean by this. If I set this to say, I don't know, uh, whoops, sorry, I'll turn Optimize off, I just want to show you how this works. So if I have just one option, one cut file here and I want to step and repeat it, you'll see by default it just sort of puts the next one after the next one, it doesn't worry about squashing it in for you. But if I check Optimize here, you can see it automatically fixes that. It actually uses as much of the vinyl as it possibly can. So it's now 16 inches in length rather than 20 inches. So I've just saved myself some vinyl by using that button there. And that's how Optimize works. But you've got to notice one thing, or one thing you should remember with Optimize is it doesn't care about the color. 
it won't worry about color separation. So if I go and select all those items with Optimize checked on, you can see that it selects all of them. So just be aware that Optimize is based on the actual cut files, not the actual cut file itself in the sense of its color. It's not worried about color separation. However, if you've got a color separation issue, you can select the color you want to uh, nest, and you use nesting for that. And nesting, if you select the color, you can see when I click nest here, it's actually grabbed each individual color and placed it and optimized it as best it possibly can. So that's the difference between optimize and nest. Optimize is applies to everything, nest applies to the color. So it gives you the best of both worlds. Because sometimes, you know, depending on what you're cutting out, you can cut out of the same color, uh, out of different colors. It really doesn't make any difference. This all depends on individual jobs. If I click on uh, say this green colour and go nest, it'll nest all the greens. And that's how the, uh, the nest works. It's just an automated way, as you can see, of nesting multiple uh, copies of the same colour. So that's how nest works, and that's how optimise works. You also get options like this rotate button here as well. Okay, so that's how optimise and nest work. I've shown you how you select your different plotters here. We've, we've talked about step and repeat. There's one other thing I just wanted to show you quickly and that is the tile box option. So if I check on that there, you can see how it puts a tile around, uh, like a weeding box around each uh, cut file there. So that's a very handy thing to have as well. You also have some menu items up here which lets you set different things, like you can install your plotter driver from up here. Again, it has its own lesson. You can set your units here. You can show what you want to, you can set what you want to view. You can draw everything in black and use those options up there. The other thing too, just quickly before we finish this lesson, is if you want to test the area, you can come here and use this area test. So if you've got a, a large cut file here like this, and you want to uh, test the area, you can do that by clicking area test. And just finally, I just wanted to show you again that media length thing, just so you understand the difference, what that actually means. If I go to the preview here, and I select all these blues. In fact, I'll select all the blues by going, say, nest, like this. So I've selected all these blues, and I've got 164 inches here. If my plotter was only capable of cutting, uh, say, 120 inches before it runs off the rails, before it runs off the, um, the, the rollers, I could set this to 120 inches. I could come back to Preview here. I could re-click Nest, and you can see now it forces it down to 110 inches, because that's what I can physically fit given the current cut files I've got. So what it's done is by setting this to 120 inches here, it means that I will only cut 120 inches at a time. So once I click cut now and this goes to the um, to the plotter and is cut out or to the vinyl cutter and cut out, the remaining blues as you can see which aren't uh, checked here would then become available and then I could nest those out. So that's the advantage with the media length and it's important you understand that that's a very handy way of stopping your uh, plotter running off the rails. And that's how the vinyl spooler works and that's the end of this lesson.